Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and in this video, we are going to build an entire YouTube setup like you see here for under $3,000. And if you already have a camera and lens, this setup is under 700 bucks. We're gonna start with a blank slate, slowly build this entire setup, and I'll walk you through everything I'm doing, as well as the gear I'm using. If you wanna check out any of the gear, all of it will be down in the description. Without further ado, let me clear all this gear out of here and we'll start from scratch. So here I am in the space that we're going to be turning into our little A-roll setup. Excuse the terrible lighting, it'll eventually look like this using all of the gear that we're gonna put together here in a second. And I already have my audio set up since I don't want you to have to suffer through listening to the on-camera microphone. I have taped off an area of this room that is 13 feet by 11, which is the average size of a bedroom, so that gives you an idea of the space that we're working with. And here are the dimensions from me to the camera and from me to the background to give you an idea of the depth that's going on here. With that out of the way, let's talk about the camera kit that I put together for this setup and then we'll deal with this awful lighting and sound. For this setup, I am using the Canon R7 with an EF to RF adapter and the legendary Sigma 18 to 35. This is an incredible setup. It is going to eat up a huge portion of our budget though, but this lens and camera combination is really, really solid. You're gonna be able to film so much great stuff with it. I can also use my phone to connect to the camera and control it so I can stop and start recordings, open up all the different options here to be able to change camera settings, check my audio levels. It's really, really fantastic and really great on Canon cameras. Here's an overview of all the settings I have on the camera. The main thing you wanna pay attention to is the 4K find, which is going to give you really high quality video. Autofocus is fantastic with eye autofocus working out of the box. And I'm also recording in C-Log. So this looks terrible because of the lighting, but if we take a look at our final product, we can see what C-Log3 looks like out of the camera and what it looks like once we apply a LUT. Now the LUT I'm using is the one that I've created for myself, but I also sell. So if you enjoy these videos and want to support the channel, check out my LUTs and I'll have links to all of this stuff down in the description. And then we have the tripod that is holding the camera up. This is one of the best budget tripods you'll be able to find. It is a Magnus VT300. It definitely looks plasticky and cheap. You will not find another head that's this smooth for this affordable. Another great feature to the R7 is that it can work with really affordable SD cards. So this Transcend 64 gig card is less than $30 and will give you about 50 minutes of record time in 4K fine, which is fantastic. Next, let's talk about sound, which is what you've been listening to this entire time because I didn't want to force you to listen to the camera's built-in microphone. And this setup is really affordable and really simple. We have a Rode Video Mic Go 2, and that is connected to the camera with a very long 3.5 millimeter extender cable. To mount the microphone, I'm using a super cheap mic stand, and this allows us to get the microphone very close to my face, so we're about a foot away from my mouth to the microphone, and that's going to massively increase our audio quality. And as you can hear, I think it sounds pretty good since we're going directly into the camera. It's a really simple setup and pretty affordable since this mic's about 100 bucks, the stand is under 30, the cable's $10 or something like that, and you're done. Now let's take care of this terrible lighting and get our key light set up. For this, I'm using an Amaran 100D. I also have a softbox on the light, and while I'm using an aperture light dome, you can definitely go with anything that is between between 30 and I would say 38 inches in diameter. I'm just using this one because it's so easy to set up, but you can get way more affordable options. To mount the light, I'm using a heavy duty impact light stand. I love these things. They're just over 50 bucks and super heavy duty. You can easily mount a much heavier light if you wanted to down the road with these. So let's finally turn off these gross lights and turn on our new key light. And here's what things look like with our key light. Now I'm using a softbox that is very dense and the light is set to only 20%. Now you might be wondering why we're we using such a bright light if we're only gonna use it at 20% and that is because I'm in a really dark room. You might be in a room with a giant window so you're gonna need to combat that amount of exposure. So that's where the 100D is great is you can crank it up if you need to fight existing light or dim it way down like I have here when you're in a giant black room. The position of the light is also very important to get the look that you want. For example, if I had this light right in front of the camera or next to the camera, it would look incredibly flat and not very pleasing, but I have brought it around to a little past so that I'm getting a little bit of shadow on this side of my face. I also have the light higher than me shooting down and that's going to create shadow under my chin, which is going to help hide all that, you know, extra skin and in general just helps sculpt the face. You could bring the light further around to the side if you want a more sidey look 
And another thing you can do is add a little bit of fill, which you can kind of see if I wave my hand behind my side of my head here. This can also be achieved with foam board. You can see if I just hold this just out of frame, how much of a difference that makes lighting up the side of my face. And I can also get rid of it to go back into a darker look. The opposite is also true. I can take something like this black fabric flag and start to darken up that side of my face by simply soaking up the light with something black. And if I remove it, now we're back to kind of a medium setup. So with our key light and maybe a fill taken care of, let's now turn our attention to the background. And I'm actually going to be using some accent lights to spice things up a little bit because it's pretty boring right now. Everything's just kind of gray and washed out. So I'm going to use this $30 RGB light. I'll go ahead and turn it on here. You can do several different colors, but I have it set to a really nice warm orange. And I've got a $20 lamp I bought on Amazon, but you could use other lamps, of course. We're essentially going to stick this thing in the lamp and place it in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and run back and do that now. And as you can see, we have a really nice warm glow going on behind us. It looks fantastic out of focus. And while this could totally work, I'm actually going to use the lamp that's already on the desk. It's one of those armed lamps that clamp onto the side of the desk. And I'm going to use a technique that I've talked about in this video where you can actually take an LED light and stick it inside of any lamp or shade like this. Next, I want to improve our background lighting. So for that, I'm going to be using this really affordable tube light. It has a built-in battery, is rechargeable. You can also power over USB. And I've got another one of those light stands. So we're going to set this just out of frame right over here, and it's going to fire background and kind of carry this light that I'm using as a key onto the background so it sells the whole look, right? Otherwise, it's weird to have this just random beam of light hitting just me and not the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on a stand and we'll get that set up. Now you can see on our second camera angle that it is right over here, just out of frame. And I'm trying to make sure it doesn't hit me. It only hits the background. And this is the final shot. So we've got a really nice A-roll setup going on here. It's not gonna break the bank and it's definitely something that you could grow on. But the nice thing is all of this gear can be reused for other purposes or use it for better background lighting and things like that. If you enjoyed this, I'm doing another one of these, but this time it's going to be a tabletop setup. I'm going to use the exact same gear you saw in this video to do an entire top-down setup from scratch. We'll talk about lighting, getting really nice detailed product shots, and it'll be a lot of fun. So until then, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Check out my camera guides and LUTs in the description if you wanna support the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.